Happy Friday. Aloha Awinala. This is Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland. In the next coming weeks, we will be having some guest hosts on this show. So come back on Fridays and um, you'll be treated to guests from mostly aligned with the Sierra Club. But today, back um, uh, back at the palace, um, you can see the uh, inside of the palace staircase here. Um, this past Saturday, or uh, July 4th, sorry, not Saturday, there was a historical reenactment, and several people from Think Tech Hawaii were involved in this production. Um, it has to do with a holiday called La Ho'i Ho'i Ea. And La Ho'i Ho'i Ea was um, celebrated first in the, 18, in the 1840s um, as the kingdom sovereignty was restored after a brief overthrow by an overzealous uh, British guy named um, Lord Admiral uh, George Pollitt. And it's now called the Paulette Affair. But um, this event was really critical because um, it, it changed the way um, Hawaii thought of itself and um, people outside of Hawaii thought of itself. It reaffirmed on the, on the international scene um, Hawaii sovereignty. And since 1985, it has been celebrated here, largely through the efforts, initially anyway, of Dr. Kikuni Blaisdell. And with me today is um, a, a young man who carries this torch um, for Dr. Kikuni Blaisdell, along with a whole lot of other people, Imai Winchester. Um, he's one of the principal organizers of the new um, La Ho'i Ho'iea, which now encompasses an amazing, um, just all kinds of events throughout the month of July. So welcome, Imai. Thank you. Um, oh, it was so exciting um, on the 4th to um, see how you were able to really, as you say, galvanize with Aloha the crowd that was there uh, at, at the palace. Uh, Matt, like you said, there was a tremendous turnout uh, for the 4th of July reenactment uh, of a very important part of our history, our collective history. Um, we've always felt at La Hoi Hoi since its establishment that education, um, the sharing of our stories um, is important for contextualizing um, a lot of the hui ka, a lot of the confusion um, that really um, was systemic over our people and was institutionalized throughout the schools. Uh, and so we're given a tremendous opportunity to celebrate La Hoi Hoi Ea with um, strong leaders throughout the community. Um, let's, let's have a picture of, um, let's see, the guy who <coughs> instigated all of this, uh, the Lord George Paulette, um, to give it some context. Oh, well, we don't have him. There he is. Okay. So this guy, tell us the story. Um, this story is no secret. Um, it can be found on uh, many texts. Uh, but Lord George Paulette, as he were, was a minister to, uh, for the British Crown, uh, serving Queen Victoria at the time. Um, he had certain um, representatives from Britain, um, a man by the name of Richard Charlton, uh, who was uh, leased a bit of land uh, from the Crown uh, when his lease was up. Um, there was a bit of uh, a disagreement between himself and the King. Uh, about where that, where that land should go. Um, Lord George Paulette uh, sort of became uh, that military force um, that was able to affix uh, Great Britain's weapons um, directly at Honolulu and threaten uh, Kaui Keoli and the kingdom uh, with over 10, uh, 10 demands. Um, and for five months, um, Hawaii was occupied uh, and was run by the British, specifically through Lord George Paulette. Um, all Hawaii's flags at that point um, were taken down. Um, the stories say that they were all burned um, and it was replaced with the Union Jack for five months. Uh, now once Victoria, Queen Victoria, I should say, um, received a letter uh, about the incident that had gone on, uh, she immediately sent a man by the name of Admiral Richard Darton Thomas. Uh, Admiral Thomas uh, became very famous for his role um, in the ceremonial Ho'i Ho'i, or the give back, 
of Hawaii's um, effective control, effective sovereignty. Um, and in so doing, um, Kaui Keoli honored Admiral Thomas by naming the first uh, public park in the Kingdom of Hawaii after Admiral Thomas. Today we know it as Thomas Square. Um, and Thomas Square exists as a national monument. Um, and these are some of the histories that we begin to uncover when we continue to tell the story over and over again. It's a fabulous, it's a fabulous event um, in, the, in the context of all of the kingdom. This is like one big event that, that is really, everybody can get behind. It was um, the writing of a, a clear wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, for the reenactment, we had um, uh, several people in the from the the, um, the historical there, played by our our very own Jay Jay Fidel from Think Tech Hawaii. He was one of the guys, and uh, Peter Carlisle, and it was um, it was a wonderful way to. It's my favorite way to learn history is mm -hmm. that that kind of reenactment. And then afterwards, there there was a gathering which you you led, and um, a sort of a, a call to unity um, amongst those of us gathered there, which I thought was really powerful. And you talked about some events that are that are part of this La Hoi Hoi Ea. So that's really um, what I I want to hear some more about. And this is all leading up to an event that uh, you're having on the 30th, right? Uh, that's correct. Um, first and foremost, uh, I would like to give um, mahalo and praise to uh, Marsha Joyner, uh, to Lynette Cruz, for Pokolai Nui, for getting all of these things together, and for everybody, <coughs> excuse me, uh, who was behind the scene who, who, who contributed to making it happen. Uh, because this is, La Hoi Hoi Ea is not just a commemoration of our history, but it's also a celebration of our capacity. Um, and for our people to be able to come in um, and share their passions, share their knowledge, um, it makes us all stronger. Um, so in 2005, uh, when Dr. Kekuni Blaisdell um, had sort of passed on responsibility to, of La Hoi Hoi to, to a new generation, um, I being one of them, um, one of our goals was to really um, direct uh, the celebration of La Hoi Hoi uh, towards education and celebration. Um, and to really inspire, activate, and like you say, galvanize our communities um, to hui, you know, to gather, to come together strong. So, 10 years ago, we wrote out a 10 year plan. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, and in that 10-year plan, um, it included expansion of La Hoi Hoi uh, into our communities. It included um, developing partnerships with different people um, who are action-oriented and go-getters and doers. Um, it was to engage a broader audience um, rather than speak to the people who already agree with the discourse at hand. Uh, we understood that it could be an opportunity for us uh, to expand um, accessibility um, to to a wider audience uh, because this is not just um, the burden of Kanaka Maoli, it's the burden of Hawaii and it includes the multi-ethnic people of it, um, including the people who call Hawaii their home today. Um, in that process, uh, we started slow and we began to develop certain relationships with people who we work with already. Um, for example, uh, this month we already had, uh, I believe, three uh, of our events go on. Uh, the first being uh, July 1st, we had in coordination with Halal Kumana New Century Public Charter School, of which uh, I'm a teacher. Um, we had a return of a stream cleanup that we invited um, whomever could make it, and we had about 60 to 70 people show up. Wow, that's really nice. Yeah, it was a really good, uh, good, really good response, and we cleared out much more than I had anticipated um, when we were supposed to start. Um, the second day um, at Kania Kapu'upu, which is a very important uh, national site as well as one of the summer residents of Kaui Keoli, um, also Rich housed and hosted the largest celebration of La Hoi Hoi where there was over 10,000 people in attendance up in Nuwano. So we want to aspire to beat 10,000. Um, how, how accessible is that site now? I haven't had the pleasure. Um, those of you who are familiar with uh, Nuwano and the back trails going up Old Pali Road um, know that it's very 
Um, there's very moderate parking, I should say. Um, but it's a, it's a walk-in. There's a lot of visitors that come and go. Um, there's some people who uh, continue to um, return every single month to take care. Um, Baron Ching, Dr. Baron Ching of Ahauhui Malamo Kaniakapupu um, on July 2nd just led uh, another one of his monthly cleanups uh, where he provides history, he provides culture protocol, um, and some good old-fashioned sweat um, to making that place come alive again, you know? Uh, that's sort of the theme that we've adopted is to make things come alive, restore, you know, restoration, the regeneration of our people. Not just being passive, being part of the being action. active, you know, yes. being active. Yes. Aloha is is an, is an action. Yeah. Um, you know, being Kanaka is, is an action, being Hawaiian is an action, being Pono is an action, you know, all those things. Um, are great philosophies to talk about when we're sitting at the table, but they mean nothing if they don't make it anywhere beyond that. Um, so we're interested in action. And we put a call out over the years um, to other communities, other islands, uh, who are interested um, to celebrating this event, celebrating our sovereignty, celebrating our, our, our special place in this world um, together um, as a collective. Um, it's a means of unifying, it's a means of creating a platform for our stories to be told by us. So one of the uh, events you mentioned was the upcoming um, education event that yes. is going to happen at Hawaii Kumana. I think we have the little um, flyer about that. Um, ka hoike. Correct. Um, um, can you talk about that a little? That's that's your home. That's your home. Yeah, that's port. my home. Uh, that's my home base over there. Um, so. Halau Kumana is one of uh, a few Hawaiian-focused public charter schools uh, who've really spent a lot of time um, dedicated to culture, dedicated to politics, dedicated to uh, the restoration of our people, not just our lands and our culture and our knowledge, but of our people as well. So it became a very good place for us as a selection uh, for where to have um, what, we've, what will be our second annual <coughs> Hawaiian Education Convention. Um, Kohoi Ke'ea is sort of a playoff of La Ho'i Ho'i Ea. Ho'i Ho'i meaning to return something to where you got it from. So the day that represents Admiral Thomas and Kaui Ke'oli that gave birth to Uamau Ke'ea o Kaina e Kopono was about putting it back to its proper place. So this might be a good time to correct that um, idea. Most people think the life of the land is preserved in righteousness, but it's not really. Ea is not life. It is sovereignty. Well, yeah, is, it, yeah, is many, many things. things. You know, the, okay. beautiful, the beautiful thing about our, uh, our language, the beautiful thing about our people, it, it was just so threaded and intertwined with kauna, with um, layered meanings. Um, so yes, you know, the life of the land is perpetuated in righteousness. Um, but what I always like to share is that historical context is super important as well, you know. Um, and Ea is not just life, it is life. It's important that's what we're trying to restore is the life of our people, you know. Um, it also means to rise, you know, like the tides rise. So the people rise. Um, our Lahui rises. Um, and it definitely means, in the, the Western term, it's become to understand as, yes, our sovereignty, as defined by our inclusion into... Um, the family of nations back in 1843, which is an important year, which is also the year of La Hoi Hoi Ea. Um, so our independence uh, is really solidified by La Hoi Hoi Ea. So if you're talking Hawaiian independence, you need to also understand the, the critical role that La Hoi Hoi plays. It's the evidence. It's why Lili Uo Kalani said, we will not fight. We're going to allow law to take its course once again. Once again. Once because again. that was our experience. Lili Okalani had celebrated this for over 50 years you know, in, the, in the kingdom. She was a student. Everybody in that kingdom knew. Uh, it wasn't the first time that um, Hawaii had been overthrown. The French had tried to do it as well. But relying on law, it was restored. So in 1893, American intervention, she relied not on violence, which would have opened, it up, uh, opened us up for takeover, but through law, the law that every nation has sworn to. Just not every nation has uh, committed to that oath, let's just say. You might, I think this is a good time for us to take a little break right. and then come back and talk about more events for this month. Living in this crazy world So caught up in the confusion Nothing is making sense For me and you Maybe we can find a way There's got to be solution How to make a brighter day
veteran. My victory was finding the strength to be a champion. My victory is having a job I can be proud of. At DAV, we help veterans get the benefits they've earned. My victory was finishing my education. My victory was getting help to put our lives back together. DAV provides veterans with a lifetime of support. My victory is being there for my family. Help us support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Welcome back to Hawaii is my main lamb. I'm Kaui Lucas. With me here today is Imai Winchester, one of the organizers of La Ho'i Ho'iea, Hawaii's very, very special celebration of sovereignty and arts and culture and history um, in a way that brings um, the general population in together to look at this in a, in a way that's, um, I would like to say, safe, playful, mm -hmm. um, deeply interesting, mm -hmm. and um, there's a whole bunch of, of uh, actual specific separate events. So have, mm -hmm. let's have a look at, at, at what we have coming on. Right. Just um, put them up there for us and then we'll talk about them. So this is the, the final. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so, what will we have? So the um, combination of this month's total celebrations, which includes a uh, Native Hawaiian education uh, convention, which is actually on the 15th. Uh, it also includes a quick Pohukaina Malama Aina session. Uh, for those of you who are interested, um, the following Sunday. Um, we'll, we'll get there. But, but at the very end, like it says here, um, we have the celebration of Kala Hoi Hoi Ea, um, which will be for the first time celebrated uh, on Honolulu Civic Grounds. Um, typically, every year it's celebrated at Thomas Square, but like we've all seen, uh, Thomas Square is under some construction right now and it wasn't physically ready for us. Um, so, uh, we were given an opportunity to sort of take our celebration, our message, uh, to a new place, to a new audience. Um, and so that's what um, our intentions are going to be. Uh, so what kinds of things will happen? I mean, that's a good long time, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah, it's a great day. It's a family day. Uh, we have free music. Uh, we have hula performances all day long. Uh, we have cultural workshops, uh, kui ai, uh, for those of us who love making and eating pa'i ai. Uh, we have uh, educational booths. Uh, pai Pai Ohe'ia will be coming down and sharing Yay. a little bit of, of Navaya knowledge. Uh, we have um, different uh, groups from, well, let's say, uh, Hawaii Community College who are going to be coming down and sharing some, some information about what they do in terms of servicing uh, Native Hawaiian students, uh, specific to, I think, Hawaiian studies. Um, we also have um, games, uh, we've been able to elicit some help from Halimua over the last uh, several years, and so they come down and they provide makahiki games, the kids can play uh, Ulumaika, Mopahe'e, they get to challenge the pohana sometimes, if they're lucky, they get a oh chance of pohana of uh, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, come on, wow. Opono Crab, okay. it's been a long time supporter of La Ho'i Ho'i, and it comes down every year. And here we're looking at a picture of another event that's happening uh, in Waianae. Uh, this one is... Uh, the, another family type event. Yeah, so um, one of the things we're very proud about is that um, we've begun to expand. Um, and so the people of Wai'anae sort of have taken up the call uh, to celebrate in their own community. So what you have here is sort of uh, a real good collection of different Wai'anae members coming together and taking it upon themselves um, to own their own celebration in their own home place. And this is what we're really encouraging for everybody on every island, uh, including uh, the Moku'e. What else have we got? Um, I do know that it's a two-day um, event on July 22nd and the 23rd. There's more information for the Waianae community as well as anybody who's willing to go down there to check out um, their Ho'olaolea, uh, which will be their second, um, uh, their second annual uh, celebration. And information about all of these events um, can be found on the La Ho'i Ho'i'ea Facebook page? Yes, correct. Um, we're very grateful to uh, Detail, who has been helping us out with a lot of the, the program, the logistics. Uh, so we're now we actually have a real-life um, website, uh, lahoihoia.org. Um, all of your information uh, can be found. Um, if you're interested in joining us, being a vendor, all that information is, is, is there, um, including uh, events throughout the month of July. So some more events. They, uh, I know there are some art, sort of arts-based and some educational-based mm -hmm. ones. Um, let's just 
Let's scroll through those. That would, that would be great. Um, so this one, I went to this one. Uh, this is in Kaneohe, or Huiku Maliola. Uh, um, and um, this is uh, more arts, uh, poetry and... Yeah, so Nahua Ea is also another play off of Laho Ehoi Ea. Nahua Ea really literally meaning the fruits of sovereignty, the fruits of our rise, you know, collectively. Um, so this was actually put together in the hands of several poets, uh, musicians, singers, um, academics, writers, um, including my wife, uh, who is the lead person uh, for this event that's coming up um, for their, uh, maybe it's the fourth year running, I think so. Um, and it's a great way for the, the community to come down and to be expressive. Um, and we really want to encourage um, all of the, uh, the East Side community to come down and check it out. Um, it's going to be a great night. And, just, and if people haven't been to that place, it's a it's a beautiful space, yeah. both inside and out, and and it's sort of in a mini version. It's sort of like a, a Hawaii everything for yeah. It's a Hawaii. little yeah. It's a little slice of uh, what Hawaii should be. Yeah. Um, yeah. It definitely is. Papahana Kuaola and all the good people who do uh, very hard work over there um, deserve a lot of credit for the beauty of that place. Um, Kanaka is very important to Aina. You cannot have Aina without Kanaka. And it's very kid friendly. One of the other things I have really appreciated about these events is they're not, oh, no, no, don't bring the kids. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're all, yeah, fine, yeah. bring the kids. Yeah. Kids are fine. And they... It's very grassroots, you know, it's bring a potluck dish, bring your kids, um, there's entertainment for them. Uh, we've had um, kid groups perform before. My daughter was uh, part of a hanakeaka put together by one of the kumus over at uh, Anu Inui Immersion School. Um, so you get a little bit of everything over there. It's a great night. And there's also some, uh, there's going to be a, a Makua access I, uh, yep. I saw also, right? So if, if somebody hasn't been out there, that's a... A very special place, um, and um, there's information on the website about going to that. There, the public is only allowed certain with. You have to sign up well in advance. Um, uh, is there a particular tie to with that, or is it more just because it is a very sacred space and? Well, La Hoi Hoi is the restoration of all things, and Makua Valley was definitely um, a pillar, an example uh, for us, at least in my education growing up, as seeing as the power, the restorative power of people, you know, to a place, and how place can be restorative power to people. Um, so in that, yes, La Hoi Hoi, uh, we have direct connections to the people who caretake that zone, and it's been a good and natural and long-going uh, relationship that we've had with Malama Makua. And we encourage you guys to go down there on July 23rd, um, check out the access. Um, there's a little bit of information you need to supply your name um, so that you can get in because it's a military firing range. Um, but there's a lot of good um, stories, there's a lot of good mo'olelo um, to be heard and to be shared. And it's a great place to take your kids um, so that they can hear the story um, of what's happening in Makua Valley. There aren't that many places on Oahu where you get the, the real feeling of uh, what the impact of um, American occupation really has been. And it's sort of very in your face at, at Makua, but what's also very in your face is the, um, just through the, the uh, restoration work there and through the archeology span that you just, you can really feel the deep, deep history. and. Uh, Maybe outside of Kahol Lavi, I don't know anywhere where you see those two things come right up against each other, quite so in your face. Yeah, the people of uh, Hawaii and I are very, uh, very proud of where they're from, um, and they've sacrificed quite a bit. Um, some t some of their lives, you know, protecting that place and sharing the message. So. Um, uh, our responsibility as La Hoi Hoi uh, uh, organizers are to continue to give them platform to tell that story, to continue to honor their work. Um, and that's what we ultimately are trying to do in La Hoi Hoi uh, is not just celebrate this past event, but we're trying to make it um, a means to really catalyze um, and motivate and provoke even more um, growth, more development, more struggle within our people um, because we kind of become apathetic um, to those things. And I think we're at such a great capacity now, more so than we've ever been, um, Thanks. to make great, make, make great things happen. 
Thanks to uh, a large, I would have to say, a large amount of the credit goes to the, the, the kind of education that um, the Hawaiian community has been able to make happen, like uh, the charter schools and like Hawaiian studies. It's like not that much support, but mm. um, really incredible dedication. So yeah. it must be very gratifying. Um, yeah. I think you said you'd been a teacher at the charter school for 13 years? Uh, yeah, coming up on 13 <laughs> years. So I have a lot of appreciation for all the teachers who, who, who have made Hawaiian education possible. Um, I know what the struggles are to deal with uh, this line of work, uh, but the fulfillment, the responsibility, the burden is something that we all must carry. And for those of you who are interested in teaching, please do. Um, we have events that could possibly um, kindle or ignite that flame in you. Um, we have people throughout the month of July that are doing things um, that are meant to take us on a positive, uh, positive path. So I encourage whoever is out there, if you feel something in your not all to do something special, um, then we can be special together. There's a there's a event happening at next door. I'd like you to yeah. talk about. That's another completely different uh, realm. Talk yeah. about that one. A so it's bit. not just about restoration of culture. It's not restoration of language as well. It's also the restoration of our voice. And some of that times that voice has evolved into music, into reggae, into hip hop, uh, and because our lahu is so diverse um, in our talents uh, and in our skills, uh, we want to give everybody a chance. You know, to access uh, this history and this collective uh, movement together. So, uh, ne in next door on July 21st, First. Uh, July 21st, um, there's going to be a great lineup um, of local reggae artists um, and local hip hop artists um, that really are expressing conscious music. Um, it's not the Waikiki shell. It's not that. Um, it's music with a message. It's music for the movement. Um, it's music to dance and celebrate who we are and how far we've come. Uh, so we invite people who are into the scene, you know, nighttime, uh, you know, our nighttime party people. Um, this one is sort of meant for them, for you. Um, so come down and check us out. Well, thank you so much, Imai, for giving us a, a little snippet of the kinds of events. I mean, they're not even a live into to Oahu. There's one happening nope, yep. on, on uh, Kauai, I know. Um, on and, Big and Island. Big they happen in New York. Um, wow. Wherever our Hawaiians are, they celebrate La Hoi Hoi Ea. So wherever you are, Hawaiians throughout the world, if you see this on July 30th, uh, July 31st, fly your flag up high um, and celebrate La Hoi Hoi together, and the world will celebrate together. Mahalo. Yeah.